works out. So, Brian, your name is Brian Bridges, right? That's right. And you're an engraver, master engraver, apprenticed, what, 40 some odd years ago? Almost 50. Almost 50. And uh, during those years, you mostly engraved with what, chisel and hammer? That's right, for probably the first 25 years. Wow. And, and what type of engraving did you do? Mostly die work at uh -huh. that time. So, so a lot of uh, dies that were done in reverse so that they could be stamped out in a positive method and a lot of facial type things and lettering and that type of stuff? A lot of portraits, buildings, almost anything you can think of. Stuff that people had to recognize. Yeah. So that made it even tougher, didn't it? You know? Well, yeah. Yeah, because it wasn't ad lib. You, you weren't an abstract artist, so you had to be very exact and very careful with every movement because everyone could recognize that person or that building or whatever. Yeah. So you, through the years, you came up with some ideas, and you got one to show today. What, what's, what's the idea you got here? Well, I'm going to show you the basic engraving posture first. Okay. And let's start with the stool. Can mm -hmm. you get a picture of that? Yeah. It's a stool that's adjustable in its height. It's an old piano stool. Uh huh. And you just twirl it up and down for the height you need. And I needed to do that because I engraved so many different kinds of things, different heights, right? Different shapes. So that's essential to me. So the the thing. position of your of your where you're sitting versus where your eyes are is pretty constant. So, um, but your work could change. So you needed to be able to change the height of your of your position by raising the the, the chair. That's right. I use several different kinds of vices, and some of them are pretty low, like this one. This one's only about two and a half inches high. Mm -hmm. And then I have other vices over here, which probably um, maybe four or five inches high. Uh huh. And uh, it depends on what you put inside of them, um, how high you're going to engrave. Right, okay. So that's why I like that stool to go up and down. Also, when I stipple, like for instance, if I stipple with this tool here, I like to get the stool way down. It's already at the bottom. And then I put my elbows on the bench. Uh huh. If I can get this unhooked here, so that I can rest with both elbows. Yes. And I can control mm -hmm. it the best way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you go real low with your chair in that case. So that's right. Back to the machinery you got there. What 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 is all that? Well, this stuff here is an automatic turntable. Wow. And this is one of the later things that I came up with when I got tired of turning the scrolls with my hand. Mm -hmm. Originally, I did it with my hand like this, without the belt. Right, and, and you were using a hammer and chisel. I was and, using a hammer and chisel. Most years, so that was a lot of extra work to uh, manipulate the movement of that because you had to set down a tool or take a tool out of position. That's right, and it's hard to make a really... Um, free-flowing scroll when you're doing that. It right. takes a lot of time. So this enables you to go in a circle from one end to the other without stopping. Yeah. Whether it's be with a hammer and chisel or with an uh, air graver. That's right, yeah. And uh, so so this uh, speed control, it has uh, reversing and it's speed controlled. And Did you patent this thing? Yeah, I did patent it. You uh, did, all right. Yeah. So this is pretty cool. and, and uh, now, when it's under power, can you move that thing by hand? Yeah, you can. Even when you got your foot on the pedal, I bet. When I got my foot on the pedal, and it's moving, you can still reverse it if you want. Wow. With your hand, or you can reverse it with your foot. I see. To reposition it? Sure, sure. Multiple ways of getting into position and then... Uh, Almost infinite control on your speed, it looks like. Very That's steady. Right. You can go from just barely turning. Yeah, very slow. Just as fast as you want. Yeah, wow. And if you want to reverse it, 
I have a a place to reverse it on my knee here. I see. I just press my knee to switch directions. Wow, this is way direction. cool. So it pretty much automates your work, especially for uh, leaf scroll uh, type design. Um, on straight line work, it's probably not so necessary, but who does that? Yep. So, um, so you have a, a, a control motor and, or a, a drive motor, which is like a differential type uh, unit, and then then you have a control unit that's all electronic. Right. And and you have a foot pedal uh, foot down pedal underneath. Down here. Yeah. And with this, uh, you recommend what kind of engraver unit? Um, do you like a, something with a foot pedal or something without a foot pedal? Well, I learned to do it with the with the foot pedal on the air graver. On the air graver yeah, as well. So, so now you're operating feet. both feet, yeah. right? But now Lindsay came up with this other air graver, which it's a palm control. And yes. you don't need the foot control then, so... Right, so now that kind of simplifies things, so you're only running one foot, which controls your turntable, and uh, the palm control makes it uh, almost a brainless operation, huh? Pretty much. You still have to have talent, though, I'm sure. <laughs> um, the, uh, but I'd say you pretty much took uh, some of the hardships out of it, to say That's the least. That's what I tried to do, Between, yeah. between the, the combination of things, for sure. And for a, a hammer engraver, I can see where this would be a tremendous uh, uh, tool. Uh, it really is, and that's when I developed it. I was still using hand uh, a hammer and chisel. And chisel. Mm -hmm. So I see you took the belt off there. What? What? Why did you do, do that? Well, some people are already trained to turn their vice with their hand. Uh huh. And you can do that very efficiently with the air graver. Mm hmm. And so when I take the belt off. Now you see how easy that moves. Right. It's very easy to turn this now with your hand and engrave this way. Sure. Yeah, and, and look at the radius you can create without yeah. moving your hand. Yeah. Um, you can you, you you could grab that at that point and move that thing almost 180 degrees at least you can. without you can switching your hand. This way if you want. Yeah. So versus a small ball vise, you'd probably make. Uh, four or five revolution or hand placement changes to keep continuing to rotate that vise. I think you would. Now all this can be done with uh, tilting vices like a ball bottom vise. Um, it can. And or flat vices, whatever it is you're you're working with. That's um, right. Yeah. And uh, so your 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 uh, your main thing is that you have a way to drive this unit and hold your graver on almost a constant position. You do um, hold your graver really pretty much in a constant position if you can. Mm -hmm. And and so now you're comfortable. Huh? That's right. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Yeah, I like it. And yeah. The other thing that I like about this low profile vise and the adjustable stool is that you can keep it your height so that your elbow is na in a natural position. Right. You're not putting your elbow way up to hold you're up high on a tall like vise. Yeah. With a short focal length. Um, let's talk about focal length for a minute. I noticed that you have a pretty pretty large distance between your your uh, your microscope and your work area. Um, I think it's about five inches. Yeah. Um, so is that relative to the height of the work you're working on? You, you, do you want to keep that pretty much constant? I want to keep that constant because that gives you plenty of room under here to work. Right. So, so basically, it goes back to that original statement that your body length is is a consistent That's right. item. So you can't change your body length unless you hunch down or, or stretch up. That's right. So the focal length has to be different, or has to be pretty much continuously the same uh, from the from the lens of the microscope to the workpiece. Otherwise, you're modifying your body to fit the circumstance. And yeah, you don't want to lean over too far if you're engraving. Mm -hmm. If you're doing it for a lot of years and you're leaning over like this, and if you're sticking your chin out, yeah, it's all causing back trouble, huh? You're gonna have back trouble, oh, and fatigue. If you have your hand way up in the air, uh, the carpal tunnel problems probably become a problem, and and uh, your shoulder is out of position and your elbow is up in the air. Uh, I, I've seen even guys that 
I noticed it had uh, support mechanisms for their arms so they could hold their elbow up in the air. That probably helps them stay out of trouble with their... Probably does, but dang, what if they just put a little longer lens, you know, focal length on their lens, they could raise, raise their unit up, get their elbow down, you know, and get in a position that's ergonomically correct. I find the most, the, the better off you are with a natural position. I agree. You last longer and you have better control, control. of your tools. Yeah. If you have your arm up too far like this without a support,